car manufacturing companies try to be as new and innovative as possible, but sometimes things don't go according to plan. Join me as we take a look at 15 of the absolute worst concept car ideas. Number 15, Chevrolet Spark Sinister. While the Chevrolet Spark Sinister was meant to be a badass vehicle, it looks more like a souped up beater that was made in someone's garage. Debuting as a concept in 2013, the car was supposed to come off as sporty, with its red trimmings, large spoiler, and stream of Chevrolet logos across the sides. Yet the reality is the entire thing looks more trashy than flashy. However, this didn't mean that the little effort went into making it as stylish as possible. And it even had a body kit with bold rocker fairings, a rear diffuser with dual exhaust outlets, and a front fascia with large air intakes. Yet despite the race car upgrades, this car ultimately fell flat. Number 14. Kalani VW Prototype While the VW Beetle is easily one of the most famous cars of all time, the Kalani VW Prototype took the style and completely destroyed all of its appeal. Created by German industrial designer Luigi Kalani, he aimed to use extravagant curvy lines to create a so-called biodynamic car. First created in 1977 as a possible replacement for the Beetle, its massive hump trunk, dotted grills, and sickly green color made it far from attractive. And interestingly enough, its parts seem to have come from several different sources, with its taillights coming from a VW Type 4, its rims likely coming from a Porsche, and most other parts likely taken from off-brand cars. Unfortunately, this lack of quality parts really does show, and I feel comfortable in saying that the Kalani VW will likely go down in infamy as an exceptionally ugly concept car. Number 13. Kia KCV2 While the Kia KCV2 concept was ambitious, it didn't exactly get a positive reception at the 2002 Paris Auto Show. Made in an attempt to combine the seating position, practicality, and good handling of an SUV with the pickup bed and off-road capability of a pickup truck, in theory, this car sounds like a good concept, with its 3.5-liter V6 engine and four-wheel drive also being quite impressive. However, in the looks department, this vehicle really does fall flat, looking like a strangely shaped SUV with a pickup bed at the back. The shape doesn't exactly work, and its strange touches such as the wheel underneath the car at the back and the shiny gray stripe that goes across the vehicle all make the design rather strange. I guess I'm just happy that Kia never explored this concept much further. Number 12. Scion Hako Coupe Concept In the early 2000s, there was a lot of hope that Toyota would use its Scion brand to appeal to North American youth. And while most of Scion's cars failed to do this, it tried to revive this hope in 2008 by presenting the Scion Hako Coupe at the 2008 New York International Auto Show. Made roughly in the shape of a Hako, or box when translated from Japanese to English, it had a lot of youthful features that were probably a bit exaggerated. After all, the concept car had wraparound glass windows, side-mounted video screens in the rear cabin, dash-mounted video screens, and even a video game-like joystick to shift gears and a barcode design on the car's panoramic roof. While Scion suggested that this concept could become a reality if well-received, most people weren't too big on that idea. And while similar renditions have been made, this concept in particular was eventually scrapped. Number 11, Acura Advanced Sedan. Acura has always been a mid-level car brand, as while it's certainly more upscale than a Honda or Toyota, it pales in comparison to the Bentleys and Rolls Royces of the world. As such, in order to get their feet wet in the ultra-luxury market, Acura decided to create the advanced sedan concept. Unveiled at the 2006 Los Angeles Auto Show, it was pegged by its design team as Acura's purest expression of advanced design, performance, and luxury. Although I'd say that it definitely missed that mark. Essentially looking like a Batmobile gone wrong, its exterior was completely matte and widened out, so the car looked like it hid a massive engine inside. While it retained the classic Acura silhouette, it was still far more angular, so as to look more futuristic, giving it a unique flair. However, despite the forward-thinking design, it didn't exactly get rave reviews, and so Acura had to go back to the drawing board and search for an entry point into the luxury market. Number 10. Chrysler Imperial no one likes an imitation of the real deal, and that was certainly the vibe with the 2006 Chrysler Imperial. Taking inspiration from the classic Imperial models of the 1930s and 50s, according to company officials, its goal was to showcase a six-figure image but at a much lower price. 
with this being clearly due to the car's massive 56 centimeter wheels and phantom style suicide doors. This essentially made the car what is known as a Luxo barge, as while it had ample legroom for rear passengers, it also had many high-tech luxury features. This is because the so-called driver's car had had very few buttons and knobs on the dash, while side effects such as wireless headsets, ambient LED lighting, a rear seat entertainment system with dual screens, and electrically retractable rear headrests ensured that this car was still top of the line. However, despite these additions, this large Chrysler sedan never sat well with buyers, and as such, it never made it to market. Number 9. Nissan Pivo 2 While European manufacturers such as Fiat and Mini have mastered the art of creating small, stylish cars, Nissan's attempt at changing the game ended in a complete and utter disaster. Unveiled at the 2005 Tokyo Motor Show, the idea behind it was that it would make parking in small spaces and cities much easier by completely eliminating the need for parallel parking. Yep, this car's design allowed the wheels to spin 90 degrees, so you could pull into any spot by simply driving up beside it. If that wasn't enough, each wheel contained an electric motor to give the car some solid power, while all of the charge came from the lithium-ion batteries. In any case, while these technical features made the Pivo 2 one of the most maneuverable cars ever, they also came at the cost of a good design, as the car's cartoonish looks would be enough to scare away practically all potential buyers. As a result, the Pivo 2 never took off, although I do really hope that Nissan one day looks into reviving the 90-degree wheel feature. Number 8. Sabaro, a system city car when it comes to creativity and questionable design choices, few cars are quite like the Sabaro, a system city car. Unveiled at the Geneva Motor Show in 2007 and 2008 by a small Swiss high-performance replica and sports car company by the name of Sabaro, it was just 3.6 meters in length and 1.6 meters in width, and for some odd reason had three wheel axles, with one in the front, one in the back, and one at the rear. It was also able to drive autonomously for spans of up to 30 kilometers, and had a range of up to 600 kilometers, sported a hybrid engine, and had a shape that prevented serious damage in the event of an accident. However, while all of this may be great, it looked pretty ugly, and given the fact that drivers can use a screen rather than a windshield when visibility is low, I'd say that this car is a pretty big change for most drivers. Despite the creativity, I wouldn't expect to see the Subaru as system city car being mass-produced anytime soon. Number 7. Dodge Super 8 Hemi While many of you are probably familiar with the Dodge Super 8 Hemi, in 2001, a version of this iconic car that was unveiled at the North American International Auto Show got press for all of the wrong reasons. That's because although its interior was quite solid due to its 5.7-liter, 353-horsepower V8 engine, and ability to go from 0 to 60 in less than 6 seconds, the positives just about ended there. That's because in an attempt to look classy, the car took a trip back to the 1950s as it had a retro cabin with unique flares, such as a four-speed automatic control made using buttons, a steering wheel made using wood, plastic, and an aluminum frame, and air vents shaped like jet engines. Despite the retro vibes, the car was also quite modern as it had a top-of-the-line infotronic infotainment system and dual tablets featuring an internet connection, which at the time was exceptionally rare. However, despite its perks, this strange luxury car never made it to market, although it does hold the distinction of being a stylistic precursor to the Chrysler 300. Number 6. Sabaro 4x4 Plus 2 You're probably all familiar with the concept of a 4x4, but at the 2018 Geneva Motor Show, Sabaro made a concept car that seriously freaked out those who saw it. That's because the idea was to essentially take a Porsche Cayenne and then rework it so it had most of the characteristics of a 4x4 and while it technically meets the requirements, it definitely leaves a lot to be desired. First of all, there is absolutely no glass on any of the windows or openings of the car, ensuring that you'd likely get soaked with rain on a stormy day or splashed with mud on a mucky one. Interestingly enough, the Sabaro has a plus two in its name because of the two wheels it has on its sides, both of which are likely meant to be replacement tires. And while the rest of the exterior is very strange, the interior is surprisingly familiar. That's because this car not only sports a Porsche 550 horsepower V8 engine, but also has many of the features of a first-gen Porsche Cayenne Turbo S underneath its wacky frame. While this car truly is in a sense a unique piece of art, it's also exceptionally strange and would be impossible to drive under anything but the most perfect of weather conditions. Number 5. Mercedes-Benz Vision Urbanetic 
Generally speaking, a car can only function as, well, a car, as it would require several major structural changes to change this car into a bus, boat, or other type of vehicle. However, in 2018, Mercedes-Benz presented the Vision Urbanetic as a possible solution to this problem. That's because the idea behind it was that the top can be taken off of the Urbanetic to turn it into a completely different vehicle, as it had preset modes that it can function as either a cargo mover or a people mover. In its cargo moving capacity, it was able to transport up to 10 pallets of goods, while the people mover could fit a total of 12 people. It was also quite futuristic, as it was not only self-driving and electric, but also had additional features such as self-learning tech and the ability to produce zero noise or emissions. Now, while all of this may sound great, the cars are absolutely hideous, as the people mover version has a strange shape and oddly designed exterior, while the cargo version looks like a massive futuristic blob. Yeah, I'd be surprised if this concept hits the market anytime soon. Number 4. ENV China has always been a tough market for Western companies to crack, and it's for this reason that the ENV by GMC and Chevrolet can potentially get a pass for its awful design. First created in 2009, it's a two-seater electric vehicle that's meant to be used in high-traffic cities in China. The idea behind it is that it would not only be able to drive itself, but that it would also look like a massive race car driver helmet, scaring pedestrians wherever it went. Interestingly enough, the car was first made by GM in a new partnership with Segway, and at the time it had a lot of top-of-the-line features such as range sensors, vision sensors, and a wireless GPS antenna, all of which ensured that the ENV would not crash into anything and have complete awareness of its surroundings. Despite its strange design, in 2011 GMC made the decision to debut the cars under the Chevrolet badge, and over a three-year period, these vehicles provided 35,000 rides and drove a distance of about 90,000 kilometers. Believe it or not, despite the strange design, further research has been conducted into these vehicles even after the pilot program finished, and many believe that this strange concept may one day be the future of transport. Number 3. The Ford Sinus Many people have strong feelings as to whether or not square cars such as Jeeps and Land Rovers look good or not. However, to own the Ford Sinus, you would have really had to identify with that look, as the vehicle is essentially just a box on wheels. Released at the 2005 North American International Auto Show, the idea behind this car is that it would be Ford's way of testing the implementation of a Ford Fiesta-style vehicle in the United States. Built to look like a cross between an armored car and a money vault, it picked up fun nicknames such as the Gorilla and Ford Knox, and it didn't exactly wow in terms of performance. After all, it sported a diesel-powered 16-valve turbocharged engine that provided just 134 horsepower, making it relatively weak in terms of strength. However, its main novel feature was its protective nature, as not only were the car's windows and frame bullet-resistant, but it also had no rear window and the ability to enter a lockdown mode. In this mode, steel shutters would close around the front windshield, windows, and the exterior lights in order to create an urban sanctuary that its users could relax in. While this certainly made the concept unique for the time, it was far from popular, and as such, this technology wasn't released on any future Ford models. Number 2. The Nissan Nails Now, generally speaking, car enthusiasts are okay when companies take creative liberties on concept cars that are meant to be futuristic. However, the Nissan Nails completely fell flat. Sporting a white, blue, and red logo that looks similar to that of the Little Tykes line of child cars, its design was anything but conventional. Measuring in at just 1.7 meters in length and sporting an exterior that looked a lot like blue matte plastic, it had a cartoonish-looking frame, wheels that opened via a zipper mechanism, and a set of fabric-clad doors at the rear that could be opened for extra storage. The inside was not much better, as it tried to fit in strange features such as a friendly robot mug, diamond floor, accessibility for cell phones, and a weird infotainment-type screen. Unfortunately, the strange looks even extended down to the car's wheels. Made to give off the impression of being rubber-faced, they essentially look like the rollers on a lunar rover. And if that wasn't enough, one of the engineers even had the bright idea of making the steering wheel a copy of the wheels by essentially looking like a giant black frisbee. According to its creators, this would work, because in the future, cars wouldn't be a means of transportation, but rather a tool for communicating with friends. Despite this futuristic outlook, the public didn't take kindly to it, and so it was scrapped and forgotten soon after its unveiling at the 2001 Tokyo Motor Show. Number 1. The 1998 Buick Signia 
While a car with a lot of utility sounds ideal, when it looks like a smushed up hearse, it tends to lose all of its appeal. Created as a concept car by Buick in 1998, it was a crossover that was meant to rival the arguably even uglier Pontiac Aztec. Now, in many ways, the Signia was a great car, sporting all-wheel drive. It had innovative yet useful features such as a removable composite plastic rear hatch that could fit tall items and large rear doors that had a 90-degree opening to make loading and unloading cargo easier. It also had some pretty cool tech, which included a powered floor that extended by as much as 38 centimeters and a blind spot monitoring system. However, all of these features were overshadowed by the car's unsightly looks mixing together the design of a sedan and SUV into a poorly thought-up hatchback, the car's most egregious error came in its horrible back design. That's because the see-through camel humpback was simply awful, while the wood piece that extended out the back looked more like a loading dock for a coffin than something meant to be used by breathing and living humans. Unfortunately, the design on the other end of the car wasn't much better, as the front had a big protruding beak that wasn't exactly sleek. As a result of these failures, the car never ended up in stores, although a modified reiteration of it was used to create the 2002 Rendezvous. However, in terms of performance, many argue that the Signia was far better, and that Buick should have simply reformed this terrible concept's design rather than scrap the car altogether. Watch our Vehicles playlist for more Top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge-watch all of our best vehicle videos.